This is just a survey of 18 lectures that I have given on semantic parsing in my YouTube channel on the playlist for semantic parsing. So semantic parsing nowadays is becoming, uh, we are in 2023, so it is becoming more popular like in, in these times. And because it's just because uh, we have new tools from deep learning. We have, uh, for example, beautiful variants of LSTM, like the uh, the tree LSTM of Professor Christopher De Manning, and stack LSTM, like the people in Deep Mind, and like. Uh, and many other variants of LSTM. But there are other things as well, because we know how to look at parsing, because we are, we are using the ideas of the paradigms of, of dependency parsing, the, the tools that we use for dependency parsing, constituency parsing, and uh, discourse parsing, all of the parsing methods are, are using the same, almost the same kind of techniques. And in, even in inference of them, for example, in dependency parsing, uh, we use the Jason Eisner algorithm. So it's very similar to CKY parsing that we do for constituency parsing. And uh, uh, we, it, because we are just using the same kind of techniques, so any article that you use for constituency parsing can also you can also use for semantic parsing or dependency parsing. They are very similar to each other. So this is an example uh, from top data set that great people in Facebook have created this beautiful data set, really amazing. And even People can do, because it's a free data set, it's open source, everybody can use that. And I use it as well. So how far is the coffee shop? You see, you have some intents, you have some slots. One slot could have several intents or slots as well. And so each intent can have either just a word with empty label or the empty label, or, or we have a slot. And finally, the leaves are like this. It could be a span of, uh, and so this is, uh, uh, the top data set is from 2018 in Facebook. And so there are similarity of algorithm, as I said, you can use these techniques for dependency parsing. Uh, for constituency parsing, you can use techniques of semantic parsing for that. And so it's a rich, rich theoretical things for people in machine learning and NLP. So there are many formalism in semantic parsing, for example, abstract meaning representation. Uh, it's like, let's say it's generalization of what you do in semantic role labeling. The lambda calculus that many people in Google still have struggled with that to get good, very accurate and fast parsers. That's why they go to simple uh, things like, like me. I go to QDMR formalism. I used a Breck data set in my article. Or they use this discourse representation structure. This is a, a formalism that neural cognitive scientists are really interested in. Minimal recursion semantics, very few people are working. I don't know why very few people are working on this. Hybrid trees, uh, uh, the guy in, that professor in uh, Singapore has beautifully created this in 28. And uh, you can, you say that my meaning is SQL. So you convert your utterance to SQL, or you say, no, I have a knowledge graph. I, I work with SparkQL. So you, com you convert your utterance to SparkQL. So these are different formalism that depending on your problem, you use that. Another uh, way 
Another perspective to look at this problem is to see it either as a combinatory categorial grammar, like people in uh, Edinburgh and Scotland, or you can think about it as probabilistic context-free grammar, and, uh, uh, and there are many other versions. So I have a playlist for this, I have a playlist for this. Uh, there are very interesting things. So there are paradigms in semantic parsing. There are pros and cons. For example, you can use sequence-to-sequence -sequence model with attention, for example, like machine translations, similar to my article, Semantic Operator Prediction in 2023. Uh, you can use pan-based parsing, top-down and bottom-up, or shift-reduced parsing, top-down and bottom-up. Parsing is tagging. Uh, people in Zurich, Switzerland, Switzerland are interested in that as well. And there are other paradigms as well. The techniques and tools, the good techniques, I recommend these, these uh, variants. Uh, this is simple, everybody can use it. But very few people use tree LSTM and stack LSTM. These are very important variants of LSTM. And so in lecture one, I, ex I explained uh, very basic things uh, by the article of Percy Leung, a great researcher on semantic parsing and question answering and many, many important things. And he is, you see, this, is, this is the simple model that we always use. What is the probability of derivation given your utterance? And... In lecture two, I, I said another paper of Percy Leung, he uses a very good uh, idea of recombinance. So everything is like sequence to sequence. Uh, you are translating a sequence to the meaning of that. But, but he's using recombinant idea to have better data. Here in lecture three, I explained great articles of Mirella Lapata in Edinburgh. Uh, and uh, you see that it's very beautiful because uh, you are taking advantage of the richness, rich information of uh, your tree and you encode it, uh, just like tree LSTM, you encode it into um, this architecture. And in lecture four, uh, they use that uh, top data set that I use um, in Facebook. They use this top data set. It's open source. You can use this data set. And they, they learn the labels directly. You see, this is the node, but they have also uh, used it for edge probability. What is a node probability of span X, I, and J having chain C? Because, for example, they call this a chain going here to here or going here to here and they they maximize this likelihood of this chain going from i to j the span i to j to be c the chain to what is the probability of that to be c so they maximize that as so it becomes very fast uh, so here as i said they they, they talk about node probability and this is the denominator, that's why it gets minus. And the, the tree score turns out to be the same scoring function. So we always do this for training. Uh, the previous works use margin loss. But computing this max terms requires running a cost augmented CKY decoder, which is order of at least n cubed, but you will see that if you add the grammar, if you consider it grammar, you should say n cubed times m. m, for example, is the number of your grammar uh, rules that you are using. So it's pretty high. It's computationally really expensive. That's why instead of training like this, that is very classic, they train 
this directly. So it's a good trick because not, they are not, at least they are not using CKY at the training time. They are just using CKY at the, at the inference time. And in lecture five, uh, Jonathan has used this uh, for, for a different uh, task. And he also, he has many contributions in this paper. Uh, but let's focus on this, keep the structure, a good article from Microsoft. So they have to, a basic parser here, but they have just a splitter to say that just like shift reduce parsing, that we split everything. But here we are splitting a phrase. For example, this one, uh, we split this. What is the good? We split this in order to, uh, in order to represent it, and then it goes here. So and then you 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 do recursion again. You split it again. Uh, so it's interesting because it understand it looks at the dynamic programming perspective. It is interesting because you have a base base parser. Your base parser could be anything, sequence to sequence or anything. Uh, it's very general. The tough times maybe is in is in here. Of course, it's not it's not bad because they they used. Uh, I've explained it in that here. I just skip it, and the next uh, approach is sequence to sequence. But now uh, they are using the people in Allen Institute are using the types as well, the type constraints as well, because this type makes it rich and reduces uh, the. Curse of dimensionality, if you look at a different perspective. So it is a really nice article. And break it down, I have used this article in my, uh, this data set in my article. Uh, I use sequence to sequence with attention to say, for example, what is the probability of a, a superlative and then group and then, so it's a sequence. Select, you start with select and then project and then group and then superlative. Uh, and this is the question, the composition, meaning, representation. It's a middle layer formalism because people understood that we don't have to work it directly. Just let's skip and get around that and be, be smart instead of working hard. So this is... Uh, why they created this beautiful data set in Israel, in Allen Institute. And uh, uh, so, for example, returning the total citations of the paper. Uh, and so you see that you can think about as a tree like this. We have a set of labels. I call these operators in my paper. I call them operators. And the next lecture is about shift reduce, but they combine it with combinatory category or grammar. I mean, people in Edinburgh uh, invented this beautiful formalism. But what is interesting is that they are now using shift reduce parsing. No matter if you are using top down or bottom up, you can you can combine them as well. In lecture 10, it's very simple because you are using sequence to sequence PTR model that I've explained this model in my playlist for summarization. Uh, Christopher Manning has invented this beautiful model. It's very simple. It's an alternative to, let's say, CopyNet. Yeah, it's very similar to that, but I prefer this to CopyNet for some reasons. And shift reduce task oriented semantic parsing with stack transformers. And nowadays you see many papers that instead of LSTM that they use uh, transformers or even stack transformers. Uh, but the idea is the same. Shift reduce could be used either as top down parsing as a, or bottom up. And in lecture 12, I talk about different formalism, uh, uh, formalism which is which is discourse representation structure DRS, and uh, the, it's a, it's a, this is a DAG direct acyclic graph. You see, there is it is not a cycle that doesn't have a cycle, and 
but still it's a graph. It's not a tree, but it's a graph. And in lecture 13, I explain another beautiful article of Mirella Lapata. Uh, and she creates a middle layer again, like tagging, semantic tagging, and then taking advantage and leveraging that uh, to produce Y. So Z is your, is your latent variable. In lecture 14, the great um, idea of... Uh, of a Wei Lu in Singapore, he he is he invented this in twenty eight, and dependency part based. This is another interesting idea of Wei Lu in Singapore, that looks at it as a dependency parsing. You see how this parsing is related to depend to think about it as a dependency parsing because it's about dependency parsing about word to word relation. So you can think about semantic parsing by just this example, how semantic parsing can be uh, modeled as a, as, a, as a paradigm for just like dependency parsing. And semantic parsing with neural hybrid trees. So if we add the discrete with the, with the continuous model, so um, there is a similar article in 2015 by Greg. Uh, so they are similar. And this, this article is amazing because they are using tree structure latent variable for semi-supervised. So because your, your parser is always noisy. And then if you use this inference, because you, you can always use the unsupervised uh, learning, uh, unsupervised things are, are free. And like language models, that's why they are successful because we don't need data. We just use the sentences. We just use these raw data. We don't need the labels. And uh, this is, they also add the supervision because we have a few data, we have supervised data. If you augment them, and alpha is is a hyperparameter to say how much you are working on unsupervised data and how much you care about your few supervised data. Depends on the size of your supervised data, you can tune alpha. And you know that uh, in variational inference, you always use uh, as a lower, you take this as a lower bound, so you maximize the elbow. And this is another article it has four encoder, it has four models, and it's interesting uh, in this, that for re reconstruction, again, you have the same idea, you have the same data, so it's like um, uh, unsupervised learning. And so we are, the KL divergence, uh, you want to, for for the unsupervised case, use the KL divergence. So this is for the unsupervised, because um, we know everything about supervised learning. Uh, a good generalization of supervised learning is structured prediction. Another good generalization is an alternative to that is unsupervised learning, also reinforcement learning. All of these are created because supervised data are expensive.